Hello everyone and welcome to my first EU4 tutorial ever. Yay! So in this video, I will show you how to create a loading screen using persistent level. I do this video because I have seen several tutorials about making a loading screen. However, they are not true loading screens as though tutorials they just add a delay note to give an effect of a loading screen, which does not feel right to me. And the reason, the second reason that I am making this video is to document what I have learned about UE4 and use it as a note for, to myself for future references. So as a result, I am not a professional, so please be kind to me. And let's begin. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to create a loading screen widget. So let's right click, user interface, and blueprint, uh, widget blueprint. And I'm gonna call this loading screen widget. So first of all, uh, before I continue, um, I just want to say that I just gonna make a really simple loading screen widget with just uh, throbbers. And if you guys want to create a loading screen with a progress bar that shows the amount of data loaded into the level using uh, like those triple A games, then you are out of luck because like I said before, I am not a professional and also it requires C++ codes and I plan to do everything in blueprints. So that. So yeah, the first thing is that I want to change the canvas panel. I want to replace it with the uh, overlay and um, I'm going to add a background image like that. Stretch it all the way out and make it black and then I'm going to add th throbber in so we have two types of throbber we have circular throbber and throbber to be honest none of these things actually make a difference uh, it's just like a different type of representation of a throbber so this I'm going to centralize this one this one is a th regular throbber it has the three dot 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 but you can also change the amount of dot dot dots uh, we can stretch it out like this kind of like that and I'm just gonna move it up a little like that and for circular throbber I'm gonna centralize it again it's just gonna be kind of like this one but it's just going in circles like that so that's why it's called a circular uh, then again we can customize it by increasing the pieces increasing the periods or increasing the radius of it. We can also change the size of the, f the dots. Just It's up to you. This is all fully cosmetic so it'll, it's up to you to customize. We can add text also um, because normally you can stop you from doing that. So let's centralize it. I'm just gonna move it down a little and then just gonna call it now loading like that. Uh, the reason why I want to use throbbers because I don't want it to be a still image when we have a loading screen come up because then uh, people will be confused wondering if the game is actually loading or it's frozen nobody knows so having this kind of animation it's indicating that it's still in loading and everything's still functioning fine hopefully so now that we have the loading screen um, we can just compile and save and we can turn this off so yeah, the second thing is we want to create a persistent level. I have this here, um, the persistent level tab. I'm going to close this out because I want to show how to find it. So we're going to go to windows and there's a layer, uh, I mean the tab that calls level, click on it. It will show the exact same thing that I have already had. So yeah, this is going to be the persistent level tab. So here's what I normally do to create a persistent level. I go to file, I go to save current as, and hmm, first person blueprint map. Yeah, I mean you can save wherever uh, place you have your maps in. I'm just trying to find where the maps folder is. So it's gonna call this um, persistent level main menu because uh, there are several ways to have a loading screen using persistent level 
you can have it from like a main menu type of level or like a game type of level so you have one level you can jump to the other level using persistent I will show you that later on so let's save that go to map and now you are in the persistent level main menu it looks exactly like the one we have because we just saved current ass so it's basically creating another copy of this but the reason why we have this is that now this is the original one before I save current ass I can drop this in so now we have two maps total one is persistent level if I hide this one it will show the persistent level and if I hide this one it will show the third person example map alright my apologies I have to edit the video a little uh, but I promise that nothing has changed so let's just continue so because as we can see that basically the persistent level and the third person example map are just overlapping one another so for example if I hide this one and if I click this model it says select a level in persistent level main menu so this actor is going to be in this level and if I hide this and I do this and this one is say select the actor in third person example map so yeah that's basically what I have just said so far it's just basically two levels up, um, overlapping one another so for the sake of the loading screen I'm just it's best if we just delete everything's out in the persistent level and keep everything's in the uh, third person example map so what exactly is the purpose of the persistent level it's basically kind of like a parent and this is going to be a the child so because of that um, the persistent level can have multiple children so for example if I creating a new level I can drag it in it's it contains all levels any kind of levels it will be added in like a child of the persistent level so because of that we are able to make a loading screen so yay now we actually doing it alright so the next thing we need to do is to create a level for our loading screen since I already make two levels uh, I can just rename this new world one into loading screen level so this level will be consisting the uh, widget that we make so the first thing we need to do is from here you can see the this controller icon click on this and it will open up the uh, persistent level main menu blueprint so the first thing we need to do is to get the event begin play load stream level stream level here uh, refers to the these children's here so in the level name uh, if we want to load uh, one level in here we all we need to do is just typing in the exact same name of the ch child level so in this case I want to load the loading screen uh, level for the sake of that widget to pop up and then just gonna tick a check mark or make visible after load this means that after the level is done it will show or make visible onto the screen and then we're gonna do a remote event this node will uh, get the event inside the uh, level blueprints of whatever the stream level that we have just loaded which in this case is going to be loading screen level so I'm just going to make this I'm just going to call this event uh, create loading screen level and I'm going to control A to highlight everything and I'm going to control C to copy the name of the event this is crucial because it's the whole uh, software is really text sensitive then so then if you have one single typo everything is wrong so it's best just to copy and paste all the event names so you don't have to type it just for the sake of not being you know wrong when you type it and then we're gonna open the uh, level blueprints 
uh, of the loading screen level this time we're gonna make a custom event so yeah type in custom or add custom event and I'm just gonna paste the name of this remote event in and from here I'm gonna create widget this widget will be the loading screen uh, widget that we made earlier I'm gonna promote this to a variable and I'm gonna call this loading screen widget reference oh shoot I already have this in use uh, I'm just gonna delete this don't worry about it if this is gonna be the first trial then that's not supposed to happen so yeah let's just do that uh, okay uh, what's next of course uh, next one is to load stream level Load stream level and now after the loading screen is done I want to load this level third person example map and I'm gonna put a check in this one and after that I am gonna want to remove this loading screen obviously so what I need to do is just pull this uh, variable out that we had just referenced before and just gonna s type in remove from parents so it's just removing this widget from the screen and then because after the uh, loading is done we want to have this level off and want this level to be loaded so we're gonna type we're gonna have the unload stream level typing in the name of this level which is loading screened level save and compile and yeah the logic is really simple it's basically what we have so far is that from the beginning play of this persistent level we want to load the loading screen level make it visible and we want to fire this event out which is the create loading screen level so when the, the when this level is loaded and make it visible this will be triggered instantly so then the uh, widget will be created out and then it will creating this I mean loading this level and then when it's done uh, I want this to be unload and the widget will be eliminated as well so that's basically the principle of how to load it uh, we can test it out right away as you can see did you see what's going on here uh, I'm gonna do this again for you guys to see try to focus on this part of the tab okay once again uh, I'm gonna do a slow motion of this as well so you can see exactly what's going on but basically this is the result uh, you can see that uh, the loading screen level is off and this is on so yeah it's basically that um, when it's loaded everything is done because this map it's not really having that many data in it and I also have a really strong PC so it's loading basically instantly but it it works and uh, yeah so this is what you see because now everything is loaded onto the map this is the only thing you can see and this level is unloaded because it has done its task it's done and so it's gone bye bye so yeah that is basically the principle of how to do a loading screen using persistent level uh, but this is only just part one because there are multiple methods of using this uh, persistent level in order to load a map so uh, stay put and I will post part two really soon uh, thank you guys for watching and yay uh, my first video yay